Oh, this is Eja Kogna Bakna. Like, share, and subscribe. Today, we're going to be delving into authentic Ghanaian music. And when I say authentic Ghanaian music, I mean instrumentation. Authentic Ghanaian instrumentation. Today, we'll be focusing our lens on a group that has been able to create a standardization for every single Ghanaian native instrument. This group is no other than the Pan-African Orchestra. But our lens today will be focusing on the Pan-African Youth Orchestra. The Pan-African Orchestra was founded by Nanadan Suapiam. But the legacy continues with the son, Kweku Kwachi. Let's watch with the Pan-African Youth Orchestra in action. In 1988, the late Nana Danso Abriam founded the Pan-African Orchestra with the aim of exploring the classical foundations of African music. After the international success of the Pan-African Orchestra, it became necessary to nurture the orchestra with younger musicians. And with this in mind, the Pan-African Youth Orchestra came into being, bringing together the various instruments from diverse cultures to a harmonized standard. Children with no musical experience, aged between 5 years and 16 years, were auditioned and selected to form the Pan-African Youth Orchestra in 1995. Directed and conducted by Kweku Kwachi, son of Nana Dansu Abia. They are also taught the discipline of playing together with other instruments and performance.
So today we'll be talking to some of the kids who have been involved with the Payo for almost 10 years. Some of these kids entered Payo or became a part of Payo with no musical training or no music training, no training in instrumentation whatsoever. But Nkwe Kukwachi was able to transform them into musical geniuses. Let's watch this. My name is Selassie Yafima Sasawa. I play mainly the xylophone and the flute. And I've been part of this family for about eight years. And I wasn't really sure I felt because music wasn't really my thing. If, if anything at all, it's Western music I used to listen and to. Before joining the orchestra, I actually had like no um, instrumental background or like dealing with instruments in all year. And this orchestra has really taken me to a whole different level. I mean, in terms of dealing with sounds and having time and accuracy, and I mean, a lot of ways. But then, yes, I'm so grateful for having these people around me because I feel they are family now. I didn't have any idea of playing the instrument or playing any instrument. But with efforts and determination, I am now a very good flutist. that I love to play is the the atum pani and the fontom. that I could play like more instruments like the Atantembeng flute, the gome, the preprepsua, the bells, the cliffers. I wish I, I could play all of them. Aside, you know, practically playing the instrument, you know, there are some other rudiments you have to understand, which has to do with the theory aspect of music. And, you know, my director took it upon himself to educate us, not only me, but all the members of the orchestra on some basic principles, um, which has to do with how to identify time signatures, you know, those basic stuff in music theory. It was a bit weird for me because I was new to this neoclassical African songs and all that, the instruments. I mean, I'm a Ghanaian, I'm an African, but I wasn't familiar with these because it was my first time having to work with this type of instrument. But eventually, with the help of my colleagues and everyone here, I was able to get used to it and adjust. And I fell in love with it, honestly and it's been an amazing journey. part of this family orchestra though we are not bound by blood but we are bound with um, love um, an aspiration a goal 
to spread um, the African culture globally, let people know what the flute does. Though the flute is produced in different regions, people in different regions don't even know how to use the flute, the xylophone, pepersoir, gumi. But through this, they are able to learn. Let's take a commercial break. We'll be right back. everything here um, I mean for the people that you have over here one thing about this property is that they really appreciate art right just take a look at this art please take a look at this art please some of the kids had something very nice to say about their teacher Kuibu Kwachi let's watch this I would like to share a story with you so it's about a porter and a clay. A porter picks a clay up and realizes and sees something more than just an ordinary clay. The porter sees a vessel. He sees something that can travel far, something that can be admired by the public. He picks the clay and molds it. The process of molding, it goes through different stages. He takes it through the fire. He beats it till it becomes the pot he, he saw or he envisioned. That porter is Dasubre Kwekukwache. He has been a brother, he has been a support system, he has been someone you could call and lean on. Our journey hasn't been quite an easy one and it has been more of an emotional roller coaster. We've been through different stages in life, like the porter took the clay through different stages. One of the challenges we faced um, during our shows, during going to programs to play was our means of transportation. It was a, it was a one man something, so he was trying his possible best. If he had it his way, we would have gone by air. But because he was managing but all by himself, he had to pull his funds and then we had to go by road. But still, he brought us back to our family. He took... I've known Don Kwekukwache for 10 years, 10 years of having known him. 10 years of him being a father, a counselor, a friend, a brother, an uncle. I quite remember one time when he, he felt like I needed help, but I didn't want to tell him, but he just told me, oh, you can just tell me everything. And then I was surprised when he realized I actually needed some money to pay my fees, but he wanted me to say it. And I said it, that I needed to pay my fees. And he went out of his way to pay my fees, buy me provisions, to give me pocket money. He's, he's been more than a father. He's been supportive. And that's one thing I really admire about him, even if he doesn't have. So these kids were picked up from a particular school. They were picked up from a school called Daras. Daras in Teshinungwa Estates, Accra. And um, the headmaster had something to say. The headmaster feels that the educational system in Ghana should be able to incorporate music. I mean, the Pan-African Youth Orchestra's kind of music. Let's watch this. I'm Michael Kwasi Daebe the former headmaster of Dara's school. Uh, somewhere 2013, one Mr. Kweku Kwechi, who had just arrived from the US to our vicinity, where the school was, approached me as the headmaster together with my son, Martin Degbe, to start uh, a music uh, project with the children. And his main focus was to refund the uh, Pan-African Youth Orchestra that was defunct some years in the early or late 2010 thereabout. 
so without any hesitation and knowing the latent potentials that were in the children and then the benefits of manifesting those uh, latent potentials and know the profit that it might be for them. And at the same time too, at those times, we were having music as part of the curriculum which we were teaching to the children. So he's coming as a professional in the musical side, particularly taking it as a project in order to develop the musical skills of the children was of very high interest to me as the headmaster. The Minister of Education, and then the, for that matter, the Minister of Education should begin to be looking in the direction of Kweku Kwechi, who is already trying to institutionalize this uh, African instrumentation uh, uh, performance. I mean, using children purely African this thing into the uh, Ghanaian system. And I think the necessary infrastructure in the schools should be created. And then people like Mr. Kwachi also are part of the people who will develop that curriculum to the level that the country will need it. The most mind-blowing performance that I've seen of the Pan-African Youth Orchestra was of them at celebrations. Oh my, these kids blew my mind. And they introduced vocalization with the orchestra. Let's check it out. So in 2019, I had the opportunity of filming the Pan-African Youth Orchestra. It was a mind-blowing sight. Kids, 9 years, 10 years, 13, 16, blew our minds with a beautiful video profile.
So moving forward, we know the Pan-African Youth Orchestra must be institutionalized. The Ghana Education Service must begin to look in the direction of Kwiku Kwachi and the Pan-African Youth Orchestra to ensure that it's infused in our current curriculum. But again, who am I? Right here, right now, it's a horror. I'ma work hard and play louder. When I come through, it's a banger. They used to call me Shao, and now it's the Happenger. Who wanna check microphone and... Jump. Jump. 